Working with reinforcement learning. Basics of reinforcement learning. In this video, we'll cover reinforcement learning as a Markov decision process, solving a fully defined Markov decision process through the value and policy iteration, passive reinforcement learning using direct value estimation, adaptive dynamic programming, temporal difference, methods, active reinforcement learning, Q learning, generalization and reinforcement learning, and policy search. Let's get started. Reinforcement learning. A reinforcement learning is an area of machine learning concerned with how software agents ought to take actions in an environment in order to maximize the notion of cumulative reward. Reinforcement learning is one of the three basic machine learning paradigms alongside supervised learning and unsupervised learning. Reinforcement learning differs from supervised learning in not needing labeled input output pairs to be presented and learning to act under evaluative feedback rewards. Instead, the focus is on finding a balance between exploration of uncharted territory and exploitation of current knowledge. The environment is typically stated in the form of a Markov decision process, NMDP, because many reinforcement learning algorithms for this context utilize dynamic programming techniques. The main difference between classical dynamic programming methods and reinforcement learning algorithms that involve artificial neural networks is that the latter does not assume knowledge of an exact mathematical model of the MDP and they target large MDPs where exact methods become feasible for many states. We can formulate the problem as a Markov decision process. Often we consider the problem of making a sequence of good decisions. That is, in a discrete setting, an agent will make the sequence of actions, observe a sequence of observations, and receive a sequence of rewards. We define the history at time t between sequence of actions, observations, and rewards, and the actions function of the history, that is the next action to take for the agent, is a function of the history. And the problem of sequential decision making can be thought of as defining and computing the function f appropriately. At each step t, the agent, as illustrated above, executes an action at, receives an observation ot, and receives a scale reward. Our world may be in a possible state of many states s, however the agent observes a sequence of states s. We often want to consider the translation dynamics of the world from one state to the next, and which is a probability distribution over s conditioned on the previous states and actions. In reinforcement learning, we assume the Markov property that the next state is only conditioned on the current state and the current action, regardless of the previous history. We can use the trick to make sure the Markov property holds by actually using the history as our state. Usually we consider the reward to be received and the transition between states, and a reward function is used to predict the rewards, which is often the expectation of the reward. We will often consider the reward function to be of the form either RS or RSA, so taking the current state and action. A model consists of the above transition dynamics and reward function. An agent state is a function of the history, and a reinforcement learning agent typically has an explicit representation of one or more following three things, a policy, a value function, and optionally a model. A policy, often denoted as pi, is a mapping from the agent state to an action, or sometimes it is stochastic distribution over the actions, and when the agent wants to take an action and the policy is stochastic, it picks one with a certain probability. Given a policy and a discount factor, a value function is an expected sum of discounted rewards, that is how good each state is and can also include an action, where the expectation over the policy denotes the expectation is taken over states encountered by following a particular policy and the discount factor is used to weigh immediate rewards versus delayed rewards. Lastly, if the agent has a model, we call it a model-based agent, and if it does not incorporate a model, that's the agent's representation of the environment, we call it a model-free agent. For the case where the observation does not equal the state, we say this is partially observable. As common in partially observable settings for reinforcement learning algorithms to maintain a probability distribution of the true world state to define the agent state, which is known as the belief state. However, for the majority of cases, we will consider the fully observable case where the observation is equal to the state. So we can formulate a Markov decision process with a set of possible states, set of possible actions, distribution of reward pair, Transition probability of the world, distribution over the next state given the state action pair, and a discount factor. The goal is to choose a policy that will maximize some cumulative function of the random rewards, typically the expected discount sum over a potentially infinite horizon. Hence, the optimal policy is given by the maximum policy of the value function. Now, often we actually can, if we have a fully defined Markov decision process, we can actually use either value iteration or policy iteration to actually solve the other parts. So value iteration, which is also known as backward induction, the policy function is not used, and instead we just use the value function, and then we substitute it into the calculation, and it gives this combined Bellman equation which we can solve, which is seen here as well. 
Now we can do simply the same for policy iteration as well, plugging into the Bellman equation here and iterating through and actually using the value function to actually put this in here as well. We can look at a quick example of MDP. And let's implement a simple MDP in the image below, where we have states A, B, which can take actions X and Y, and their probabilities are shown just above the arrows. We start with using the base MDP class and a custom MDP class. Obviously, we need to make a few changes to suit our case, and we need to use the transition matrix as our transitions are not very simple. We can model it as follows. We solve it with value iteration. So after a number of iterations, the values stabilize, and we see that state A has value of 72, B75 and end 100. So the total policy here is go from state A to state B to get a high reward and then the eventual end state. And we can do the same for policy iteration. Here we actually end up with a value iteration and also policy at the end as well. Reinforcement learning, passive reinforcement learning. For passive reinforcement learning, the agent follows a fixed policy and it attempts to evaluate a given policy without any knowledge of the reward function and the transition model. This is achieved by value estimation, where the agent attempts to directly learn a value for each state that would result in following the policy. Although to each state it has to perceive the reward and state, it has no global knowledge of these. Thus, if a certain set of actions offers a very low probability of attaining some state, the agent may never perceive the reward. For a series of actions given by policy, the estimated value function is as follows, or the expected value of some discounted rewards until termination. Based on this concept, we discuss the three main methods of estimating the value. That's direct value estimation. First, most naive method of estimating the value comes from the simplest interpretation of the above definition. We construct an agent that follows the policy until it reaches the terminal state. At each step, it logs its current state and reward, and once it reaches the terminal state, it can then estimate the value for each state from that iteration by simply summing the discounted rewards from that state to the terminal one. It can now run the simulation n times and calculate the average value of each such state. If a value occurs more than once in the simulation, both its values are counted separately. Adaptive dynamic programming. So this method uses knowledge of the past state and the action and the new perceived state to estimate the transition probability model. It does this by simple counting of the new states resulting from previous states and actions. The program runs through a policy a number of times, keeping track of each occurrence of the state and the policy recommended action and each occurrence of the state resulting from the action and state. And then lastly, temporal difference. Instead of explicitly building a transition model P, the temporal difference model makes use of the expected closeness of between the values of two consecutive states from the transition matrix, and the update is written as the following Bellman equation. Let's look at an example of a grid world MDP class. We have a two terminal states, plus one, negative one, and we start here with this obstacle in the way. We model a probabilistic agent, which can only move in a particular direction 80% of the time, and then moves randomly in the orthogonal directions the other times. So we can use direct value estimation. And when we run this, we can estimate the value function. And then we can use adaptive dynamic programming agent. And this comes up with similar value functions. And we can use a passive temporal difference agent. And we learn the difference between states and back up the values to previous states. And we get a value function again. Active reinforcement learning. Unlike passive reinforcement learning, in active reinforcement learning, we are not bound by a policy and we need to select our actions. In other words, the agent needs to learn an optimal policy. The fundamental trade-off the agent needs to face is exploration versus exploitation. Q-learning agent. In Q-learning, the agent learns an action value function, which gives the value of taking an action in a particular state. Q-values are related directly to values as follows, where we take the maximum action, which equals the value function. Q-learning does not require a transition model, hence it is a model-free method. As with values, we can derive the update equation from Bellman's equations, which is the temporal difference of Q-learning, and is calculated whenever we take an action A in a state leading to another state. When exploring happens, Q-learning uses the best Q-value, hence it is called an off-policy algorithm, as it does not follow a policy when exploring. And below, the Q-learning agent class implements exploration function F, which returns a fixed R, an optimistic estimate of the best possible reward attainable in any state until the agent has visited state action a number of times. And in the method, actions in state returns actions possible in a given state. It is useful when applying a max and argmax operators. Now we're going to find Q function is this. Now let's have some different actions which we're going to put. And then when we actually learn Q learning, it's as follows. And the value of each state can be related by the following. Now let's convert the key values into value function estimates, which is follows. Generalization of reinforcement learning. 
Presently, we have looked at value functions and Q functions over small state spaces. Have these become computationally feasible to compute for large state spaces, 100,000 plus states? However, practically in the real world, we have many more states, or in the problem of games, these have many states as well, such as chess, there are 10 to the 120 states. We realistically cannot visit all these states in order to learn to act optimally. We solve this using function approximation, where we learn a function to represent the Q function or value function instead of a sampled lookup table. This has the added benefit that through this compression, it allows the agent to generalize from its states it has not yet visited. For example, by examining only one of every 10 to the 12 states in the game of backgammon, it's possible to learn a value function that allows the program to play as well as any human. Looking at the value estimation with function approximation, this becomes a supervised learning problem. Suppose we look at the above grid MDP example, we can model the value estimation as follows, where we prioritize it in this linear regression model. Given a collection of trials, we can then obtain samples for the value functions, and hence forming a readily solvable supervised learning problem. Here illustrated with the toy linear regression formulation, however, could, this could also be a neural network. However, we can benefit from online learning, updating the parameters after each trial so if we have a value at a particular state, there is observed total reward from the state S onward in the jth trial. We can use the following parameter update equation, which is gradient descent, which is also known as delta rule. And can also apply these ideas to temporal difference learners as well, such as new versions of temporal difference become the following. Given the Bellman equations. Policy search. A simple idea and approach to reinforcement learning where we keep modifying the policy till we converge to a performance that is no longer increasing. We can parameterize a policy which maps states to actions, for example, by a collection of parameterized Q functions. We take the maximum action to get the policy. In this example, we'd learn a, a Q function that is close to the optimal Q value function. However, this results in finding an optimal policy and action sequence through the states. However, we will not learn the optimal Q function as our learned Q function would be a scale of the actual one. One problem of learning a policy is that the policy function is a discontinuous function on the input, making it difficult to differentiate. This can be solved by using a stochastic policy, a probability selection of A in state S. One common representation is using the softmax, which gives a continuous function which is readily differentiable. To improve the policy, we can then define a policy value that is the expected reward we get when following a policy. We can then perform gradient descent as usual. However, this naive approach is inefficient due to the stochastic nature of the policy. One solution is the reinforce algorithm and to compute the policy value gradient, where we have n trials in all the action taken on the jth trials as action aj. Policy gradients in general are capable of learning a general approximation to the policy. However, they suffer from high variance so they require a lot of samples, which poses a challenge of sample efficiency in practice. However, they often converge to some local minima, which is good compared to Q learning approximation, for which there are less guarantees, as we approximate the Bellman equation with a complicated function approximator. Action spaces. So far, we've only discussed discrete action spaces. However, we can also have continuous action spaces, and we represent discrete with categorical policies and continuous with diagonal Gaussian policies. To summarize, the agent formulation decides the kind of information that must be learned. The main three agent formulations are model base uses a world model p and a value function model free value base uses an action value q value function reflex design policy base uses a policy in summary we've covered reinforcement learning as a markov decision process solving fully defined markov decision processes value and policy iteration passive reinforcement learning direct value estimation adaptive dynamic programming temporal difference active reinforcement learning key learning generalization and reinforcement learning and policy search